Dr. Pooja Devan, your gynecologist whom you're going to meet each time in the show. What if I were to share with you that your lifetime risk of cancer is one in four? And if you're an Indian woman, then every four minutes, one woman is diagnosed with breast cancer and sadly so, every 13th minute, one woman dies of it. The burden of breast cancer in India is to the tune of nearly three and a half lakhs per year. And God forbid, if you were to have a disease in your breast and your breast had to be removed, it would be a devastating event in the life of a woman. Are we not justified today to address the issue of breast cancer prevention and awareness? If cancer was a devil, then breast cancer is better amongst the devils. I would say there are some positives. This early detection and screening, awareness, targeted treatment and improving survival rates up to the tune of nearly 90% for a 10 year survival period. So let's play with some numbers and do our maths. Zero originated in India and if I were to have a wish list, then breast cancer prevalence in India should be 0%. However, breast cancer accounts for 14% of all the cancers in India and amongst the women, amongst the female cancers, it's right there at the top over a number of uterus cancer, cervix cancer. Pink is the ribbon color which symbolizes breast cancer and October is the month for breast cancer awareness worldwide. And now if you were to ask me what is the risk factor for breast cancer, I would confidently say that just being a woman is the biggest risk factor. Your female hormone estrogen is a risk. Your increasing age is a risk. Breast cancer can happen as early as 18 to 20 years, but with increasing age, there are two peaks. One at the age of 50 to 54 years and the other at 65 to 69 years. Now, let's look at the correlation with your lifestyle. If you're obese, if you drink, if you smoke, you are at risk. If you are exposed to radiation, if you have had a history of breast cancer, you are at risk. But maybe what you didn't know was that if you have started your cycles early on, if you have a late menopause, if you don't give birth to kids, if you have your first baby as a late conception, if you are exposed to contraceptive pills, if you take hormone replacement therapy for menopausal symptoms, you are at risk. So life is all about genes, isn't it? Good genes and bad genes. So there is heredity involved with breast cancer. And there are two prominent genes, that is BRCA1 and BRCA2, which are the genes associated with breast cancer. And let me share with you that if you have a BRCA1 gene, there is an 80% probability that you will develop breast cancer in your lifetime. And along with that, a 40% probability of developing ovarian cancer. And if you have BRCA2, that's lesser of the two devils, then you have a 40% probability of developing breast cancer and 20% probability of developing ovarian cancer. But that's not all. There are so many other genes. So breast cancer can run in your families amongst the women. And if you look around, you may have relatives who are affected with breast cancer. Now, these relatives can be your first degree relatives or your second degree relatives. So what do we mean by first degree relatives? As in, it's your mother or your sister or your daughter. And when we look at second degree relatives, then we are looking at our grandmother, your mother's sister, your granddaughter. So it also affects as to whether it's a first degree relative or a second degree relative and amongst the cohort, how many of them are affected. Then there are some nasty family hereditary cancers which are also running not just amongst women but amongst men as well. So somebody could have an intestine or a stomach or an esophagus or a kidney or an ovary or a breast cancer reasonably uncorrelated but the cancer runs in your body. So what can you do to reduce your risk? Your genes are not in your hand. You can't just blame everything onto others. Some things are in your hand. Lifestyle modification. Move around. Don't just sit. Exercise. Don't be sedentary. Lose weight. Don't have alcohol or limit alcohol. Stop smoking.
But what else you can do? If you have a baby, do breastfeed and breastfeed for long enough. Avoid exposure to radiation, keep away from pollutants and examine your own self. Self breast examination. If you think there is a trouble, go to your doctor and get clinical examination by the doctor. And if the doctor advises, as per routine, you can go and get done screening. Screening through methodologies like mammography, ultrasonomammogram, MRI of your breast. There's a whole bundle of them. Breast cancer can emanate from the very pipes, tubes which reach to your nipple and carry the breast milk. That's ductal breast cancer and it can also begin from the tissues which make the breast milk. That is lobular breast cancer. Now we can have breast cancer which is invasive. And there is also a category which is pre-invasive that is carcinoma in situ. So when you examine your breast, you need to examine your breast, examining the deeper tissue, both the nipples, and the breast tissue and also the tissue under your armpit that's the axilla now how do you examine you examine yourself standing in front of a mirror observe yourself feel yourself touch your breast you lie down and that's a better way in addition to standing you have to examine yourself lying down because you can feel the breast tissue better and deeper you could do that casually in front of the mirror in your washroom or even under a shower. Now the question is, when do you examine? You examine three to four days after you have finished your menses. And how frequently? Every month, obviously. And when do you start? Well, from the very time you actually get well-developed proper breasts, the moment you are a woman. There are warning signs to pick up breast cancer. You may feel that there is pain or you may feel there is itching or irritation in your breast skin. But when you look into the mirror, you might find that there is a change in the breast size and shape. One breast could suddenly become smaller, the other could become larger, the nipple may get deviated, it may move inwards. When you look at your skin, you may find that there is redness, there is a rash, there is a darkening of the skin you might find that there is a, a kind of bump or swelling your skin may actually look like the orange like a pudy orange appearance with a little bit of edema and puckering spots also when you look at your nipples you might find that it's become red it's become flaky it's become itchy and when you press your nipples which is a must must you must always press your nipples to see if there is any discharge. Any discharge, which is except whitest discharge, which could be milky, is of suspicion. There could be frank blood coming out of your nipples. There could be a greenish discharge, yellowish discharge. And you must always examine your breast with your own fingers. You might feel a lump. Uh, which could be as small as a pea or a bigger uh, lump like the size of a tennis ball. You must always examine your underarm because the tail of the breast goes into your armpit. I assume that you would be examining your breast every month. So when should you go and see your doctor to get clinical examination of the breast done by your gynecologist? From the age of 20, Every three years should be the routine for you to go and visit your gynecologist and once you turn 40 every year. So when do you get your mammography done? There are various schools of thought. Some say that the age to begin mammography is 40 and the others say it's 45. But for sure, once you turn 45, you should go and get mammography done every year. When do you stop getting the mammography done? They say that as long as you're alive, the other school says till the age of 75 and then there's another school which says that whatever is the life expectancy in your population 10 years before that you could stop now with increasing life expectancy and with the second wave of breast cancer happening between the age of 65 to 69 you can't stop as soon as that so please 
get the breast uh, mammography done for as long as you can contact your doctor there may be tailor made solutions for you there may be do's and don'ts individualized for you mammography is not a pleasing word for many women to hear it brings in feelings of discomfort and having to bear yourself in front of a stranger to get a test done for many it's an experience of extreme pain because your breasts are pressed and compressed between two plates let me assure you that the modern technology does not cause that kind of discomfort and the expertise level itself has changed so how do we benefit from a mammography if you cannot see a lesion if you cannot feel a lesion mammography will still pick up a lesion even at a microscopic microcalcification level there are definite benefits now mammography has a scoring system which is called birad scoring 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 one means there is negative risk for cancer now there is nothing known as negative but that's a calculation two means that the lesion that you have is non malignant and benign three means it is probably benign four means that it is suspicious of a cancer five means it is highly suspicious of a cancer and six means there is frank malignancy cancer now i started the scoring with 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 So, if you have a score of zero and Probably one means negative, benign. then zero does it mean that it is so reassuring that you, there is absolutely no probability for you to have a cancer? No. I must warn you that a zero score means that mammography, when done, has an inconclusive report to share with you, and we need to add certain other modalities to find a conclusive answer. to your birad scoring and your breast cancer risk and most commonly and the easiest modality to add on is ultrasound of your breast both the breast ultrasounds take place and this is known as sonomammography so besides mammography there is ultrasound of the breast and mri amongst them of course mri is the most expensive so when do you do an ultrasound of the breast you do that when there is a lump either in the breast or in the axilla and you want to know the true nature of that lump add to it a situation as a first modality of choice if you are a pregnant or a lactating woman and you have a breast lesion then you do an ultrasound of the breast first and then you go and look ahead for any other modality mri is the most sensitive to be able to pick up the smallest and the most confusing microcalcification lesion but in routine perlans it is not that commonly used but its usp is that in case there is a breast abnormality which is suspected particularly in a woman who has breast implants in her or if you had breast cancer in the past and there is a resurgence which we are suspecting especially along the line of the previous surgery scar then mri is one amongst the best modality all three modalities are non invasive as in no needle is put in them they are safe and in case there is a lesion that we have found if there is a lump we have found then we can identify the lump with the help of an ultrasound and we can put a needle inside of it to biopsy it this is an ultrasound guided biopsy now this biopsy can be done with a fine needle which is known as fnc fine needle aspiration cytology and it can also be done as a true cut biopsy which is a slightly bigger chunk and a deeper chunk it gives you more tissue for a more reliable diagnosis in one go of course a true cut biopsy today has higher sensitivity and specificity than a fnc needle mri based biopsy can also be done although the discussion today is about breast cancer screening and prevention but no discussion is reassuring if you do not highlight upon the methods of treating I have already stated that if you are diagnosed early stay in stage 1 then your prognosis of survivability is to the tune of nearly 90% for up to a period of 10 years now if you are diagnosed with this breast cancer there can be three modalities of treatment 
you might need a small surgery where just the tissue is removed that is the excision of the affected tissue is done or there could be a slightly larger removal of tissue but both of them are breast conserving surgeries. The other extreme could be that the entire breast is removed along with dissection and removal of some parts of tissue from your underarm. Now, in the earlier stages, you may or may not need to add chemotherapy or radiotherapy. But mostly, from stage 1 and beyond, you need to add radiotherapy, which is the radiation which is given onto your breast. For most cases, besides the surgery, chemotherapy and radiotherapy are also added. For the lucky ones, they may not need to have a tablet for a period of 5 to 10 years of their life after breast cancer diagnosis because they may not be needing a hormone therapy. But for most, they need to pop in that tablet because they may be sensitive to certain receptors and hormones like estrogen and progesterone and how to new. The world isn't as gloomy. It's the lens with which you look at it. There are inspirational breast cancer survivors, celebrities like Angelina Jolie from Hollywood, former President Regan's mother and Tahira Kashyap from our very own Bollywood. The old adage, prevention is better than cure, shall always stand true. The discussion today was not to disturb you, but to sensitize you to the issue of breast cancer. I wish you all good health, stay safe, see you next episode, goodbye and thank you.